Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy. I'm so excited to be with you today. Today we're going to be doing another page in our watercolor journal series and we are going to be doing some wildflowers or maybe not wildflowers, but just flowers. Some expressionistic loose flowers um, of a different varieties and we're going to wing it. I'm just feeling floral today. Um, okay, so we're gonna start with some stock flowers that might resemble something like delphinium or I don't know, lavender, something like that. But we're gonna do different colors. And then we're gonna add in some petal flowers and then some other small little flowers. But we're gonna basically go across the bottom here and we're just gonna create a lovely um, kind of array of flowers. So I'm going to start with uh, some magenta and I think I'm going to do magenta, purple, yellow. I'm definitely going to have to clean up my tray here. So I'm going to start with magenta and if you need to draw something out first to kind of guide you, you could. So I normally wouldn't, but I'm going to draw this in here. Just I'm going to start with this kind of stock here and I'm going to work my flowers around it. So I'm going to do a watered down version, lots of, um, or a light version, light value, lots of water in my magenta. I'm using a Princeton Aqua Elite size eight brush right now. Uh, and I'm in my Baohong sketchbook with my core paints. And I'm going to start at the top with just like a little cluster like this a little cluster of a flower and I'm going to work my way around this stem. And you can see some of mine cross over the stem and some are like really close to it and touching it and some are a little further away. And they kind of find their way across this way. Okay, and now while it's still wet, I'm gonna pick up some darker magenta. I'm gonna drop that into some of them like this. There we go. And then I'm gonna take my sap green. Here we go. And I'm gonna add this stem in the middle and I'm gonna let this stem touch I'm not going straight through, I'm picking up my brush in between, but I'm letting it touch the flowers on the way up on the edges. And then the ones that are a little further away, I am gonna add like a little bit of green, kind of hugging them around them, like at the bottom where they would bloom out of their... Then I'm gonna put a little more green at the top. And maybe even one or two little green buds here that haven't bloomed yet, like this. So fun, right? So easy, you don't have to overthink it, but it looks so lovely. All right, so let's try that again. Let's do a different color. I'm going to do yellow. I'm not going to draw my stem this time. And probably to the yellow, I'm going to use cadmium yellow at first. Water that down a little bit. It's a little strong. And then I am going to probably add a darker yellow, the diorolide yellow. And you're just imagining the stem up the center and kind of working your way around both sides of it. And then the diorolide yellow, I'm gonna drop in. I usually drop it closer to the stem in the center, but it doesn't always have to be there that way. And then we're gonna go back to our green. And again, letting it touch. She go through, so it kind of bleeds in. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Let's do one more in a different color. Uh, let's do some purple. Take the purple out here. It's getting a little pink in it, but that's okay. All right. I'm going to try to angle it the other way. Just adding a little water, lighten these up a little bit. Have it even overlap. I'm using a dioxazine purple, but if you don't have a dioxazine purple, you can definitely use it. And you have magenta and a blue, make your own purple. Bringing the stem right up through the center. This one I will kind of go beyond my last bud a little bit with the green. So easy, right? Just got to be able to blot onto your page. Bloop, bloop, bloop. But it looks so impactful. And one of the keys is that light and dark combination, making sure you have some lighter color and some darker color. You can even go in in these little green buds and like add just a tiny little bit of color peeking out here and here. The yellow, I think, looks the best with the green. Um, but let's add in some other types of flowers. All right, so we're going to add in some kind of poppy-like flowers, some petaled flowers. I'm going to use some cadmium red for these. And basically, I'm just going to make... big... So this is kind of the outside of the flower. This is the inside of the flower here. Some red down there. And now I'm gonna add the center that you can see using a little Payne's gray in here. Boop. And some sap green. Again, letting it touch. Add a few leaves. There we go. Let's do another one. Here. This one is going to kind of be just facing upwards. This, add in a little more red here and here, and a little sap green at the bottom. There we go, and maybe one more. Maybe another one over here, over here, do one over here. I'm going to do it kind of facing the center. So leaving some space in the center there. So just dropping another color wet on wet and letting it do its thing. We'll have a stem coming down this way. And then we'll put in that center. And you can always let things dry a little bit more if you're afraid the center is going to bleed too far. But nice and loose. There we go. It's fun. 
All right, let's think of some other shapes of flowers. So petaly flower, a stocky flower. What else could we add to this? Uh, we could get more creative with leaves and also with smaller um, little flowers. Like, let's do something that, get some blue. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I have some phthalo blue out here. I'm going to water it way down. I'm gonna do like upside down, not snowdrops, would they be snowdrops? Like a snowdrop or a lily of the valley maybe. Basically they're hanging downwards. And again, you don't have to make, you can just use nature as inspiration, but you can make stuff up. It's the beauty of art. All right, so now I'm gonna take um, just a thinner brush, some of this other green here, and basically I'm gonna hook these stems around so they're like drooping like that. This one's gonna be like, whoop, right there. It's going to be there. There you go. So like a, a little droopy flower. I just switched over to a liner brush that I had. And what else could we add in here? We could do like kind of some like a hydrangea flower, they're really, uh, they take up a lot of, a lot of space. Or maybe some, uh, so we could do another type of petaled like flower, like a black eyed Susan, which is very similar to a cone flower. So I'm gonna use some yellow. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put in some burnt umber first. So I'm gonna do, let's do a couple over here. So we're gonna do little gumdrop shapes or rounded tops. Put in a few right here. There we go. And then from that, I'm gonna take my diorolide yellow and I'm just gonna pull down some petals like that. Definitely could change up your brush size. You can always drop in a little more color. Okay. Oh, I missed one. So you can see I did these facing forward, these facing up. I'll do this one facing up as well. This one's still really wet. The center. And then again, they deserve stems too. Boop, boop, boop. can always fill in with lots of leaves and if you didn't see the leaf structure leaf painting video a couple before this that would be a great one to kind of help you fill in different um, types of leaf structures to vary everything so it's not just the same type of leaf painted over and over again every time changing up the size the shape, the color. There we go. 
Let's do uh, one more leaf something, maybe a smaller brush. You know what, I'm gonna pull in, I had this filbert brush, which is basically just a rounded head. I've never painted a leaf with this before in my life. But I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna put in a structure down here. So I definitely find you have to go on the side for the stem side for the stem and then kind of twist it over. Not a fan, not a fan for leaves of this brush. I bought this brush a while ago and I have not used it since. There we go. All right, so there's our nice little wildflower garden. I don't know how wild they are, but they're kind of wild and crazy and I love them. So thank you so much for painting with me once again. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description of this video, uh, like and subscribe to this channel, as well as share with a friend. Uh, leave a comment. I always love to see your comments. Uh, and thank you so much to my super thanks contributors. You guys are amazing and you help me keep doing what I do every day. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you for the next watercolor journal idea video very soon. Take care y'all. Happy painting.